All right, everybody, this is Ryan Fitzgerald from Anchored LI and Long Island Roundnet coming at you for the third Roundnet film review. Uh, this is the third most popular video on Drew Chiswick's um, videos. It is Chiswick Showalter versus Spicy Ruby, uh, the finals of the Spike Ball Roundnet Nationals 2017. This is game three. So this is the first. This is the third video of the series. Uh, first one I'm not in. I was watching it live. Um, definitely a much bigger game than the last two in the in the realm of Roundnet. Uh, national Championship on the line. Just to give a little backstory going into the game. Uh, CS, I mean, they were the favorites the whole year. Number one team in the country. Um, they had a really hard road and this bracket happened to be very one-sided the tournament got put indoors last second because of a thunderstorm and that's why we're everyone's crowded into this uh i mean it was a pretty good arena for what they had last second uh but the the ceilings were pretty low so anytime the ball hit the net the point was totally redone um, which did cause a lot of issues with games in this finals including you know every other round basically but on one side of the bracket in the round of 16, uh, Strange and Brace had to play uh, Skyler and Bowles and Buddy Hammond, which they were favorites to do pretty well since they won West Regionals that year. Uh, Strange went like 4-4 four and four in pool play, so they screwed some stuff up for people. CS had to play Strange in the quarters um, and beat them in three. And then CS played uh, two guys um, in the semifinals after two guys knocked us out in a game three extras for that's my specialty, I guess. Game three extras in the quarterfinals for nationals. But yeah, so CS had a really tough road beating. This was probably their easiest game. Uh, but Spicy Ruby coming in hot. Dan McPartland, um, really good server. So we're just going to go right to it. Game starts off really hot uh, right away with the video. So let's get right to it. Dan with a Fuango ace, but... Uh, ben Dantowitz calls it back. Ben and Ezra were observing this game. I think Nick Sant was the third observer. He's not on the screen. I'm not positive. But Dan's second serve goes with the drop, gets it. Tony just can't believe it. I mean, Dan's serving is uh, is their is their break maker. Everyone knows it. Tony just had to do a really good job of holding and allowed Dan to break when he could. Um, Dan's a great server. Didn't have a great 2019 season, but didn't play a lot. Um, other than that, I mean, he won regionals 2018, had a good season. Uh, when he played with Tony in 2017, they had a good season. Even before nationals, uh, took second place to me and Ant in, uh, at regionals. Um, won some other... Uh, did they win some other tournaments? They did well at other tournaments, but yeah. So CS, this was their first national championship um, together. Since then, uh, they won 2018 and 2019. I'm going to keep the score as best as possible. I think it's 3-2. That's a rim. There's also no second serves when you hit the rim. Uh, that rule was started in 2019. So the game kind of flies pretty fast when there's you know a bunch of rim serves in a row. So we got 4-3, Spicy Ruby. Uh, I talked about McPartland, who's playing with Spectre this year for the 2020 season when it happens. Um, Anthony Wrench, a.k.a. Tony, is uh, the other member of Spicy Ruby here. Really good player in his day. Um, I mean, this was by far him and, him and Dan's best finish. I'd be surprised if this gets called an ace, honestly. That looked like it rolled up from first view. Oh, Max was the other. I should have known that. I think Nick did some other observing. I think... Yeah, they're going to call it back for sure. Also, Easily Dug was the other team and the other semis you could see in the background versus two guys. They had a... Uh, a pretty magical run. Just to give some perspective, Easily Doug and Spicy Ruby were ranked like... I think Spicy Ruby went into national championship being ranked ninth in the country. And Easily Doug might have been like 10th or 11th. 
um, and they were in the other semifinal. So that's how you can see um, how slanted the bracket was. I will say, like, uh, there were some – oh, no no double touch. There was a double touch there. So Ruby's going to take take a 6-5 lead. Tony's got a pretty good drop, but rims that one. But, yeah, Ruby um, never had to beat someone better than them on paper the entire national championship, and they ended up getting right here to a game three to, to win it all, which is pretty crazy if that happens again. I'd be so surprised. Ben calls a reach on that one. Definitely a closer call than any type of fuango that he's going to call on Dan. But definitely not out of the question. Dan had a really good cut this year. One of the original... Um, I shouldn't say right. One of the original best cut servers, for sure. Um, and still has a great arsenal of serves. That was a sick hit, but Dan clips the net, I think with his foot or rimmed it, one of the two, but everyone agrees. Let's see if there's any type of one, two, threes here that we can comment on for any type of defense or offense. But right now it's just teams still getting settled in game three pressures on. I mean, Hundreds of people, probably about 200 people watching this live, which is pretty awesome. CS with the 9-8 lead early. Oh, that's a sick serve. Tony does wrong there. Um, let's see if we can back that up. You can't see it too well, but he backs up way too much. Um I mean, when you back up, you lose the ability to go right to left a little bit quicker because there's more space. Um, so that's the tough thing. If you stay farther away from the net, you just got to make sure you move your feet side to side really well when you're concentrating on the ball. Um, some players do that really well. Uh, Tyler does it really well. I know Anthony Alvino does it really well where he can back up while also you know, pay attention to what the server is doing and moving his feet. Um, I tend to not do that as well, but also that that leaves me. I don't get drops drop base too much. Uh, Tyler and Anthony uh, can be susceptible on the drop because they step back. Um, I stay pretty close to the net on my serve receive, which means it doesn't get to the side of me too much. But when it does, it's because I don't move my feet. Um, I need to make sure I move my feet left to right, even though I'm staying close. I stay planted a little bit too much. But that's what Tony does wrong there. Tough to see the angle, but you know he beats him to the side, and he almost backed up out of the screen trying to get enough time to save it. Little back pocket here. But yeah, CS with a crazy road to this finals. Um, Ruby with a little bit easier of one, but I mean you gotta. <laughs> they took advantage of their road. Sometimes you gotta take advantage of your road. Good drop. Oh, almost a great up. I believe they should be rotating here. Yep, Tyler knows it. We got 11 serving 9. Game's moving real quick with a lot of missed serves. Uh, nowadays with the double serve, you don't see it as much. A little bit more, more to do. Great lefty. That's one thing Tony did really well uh, during 2017 and 18. Um, didn't play too much last year, but he has a really good just clean lefty put away. Oh, bad, bad hit there by PJ. Oh, goes for the cheeky. That was nuts. So one thing, good on, a good set. PJ assumes that he can split uh, both these players, but Dan makes a great read and, and guesses correctly that PJ is going to go for somewhat of a push. Often maybe people will go for, I mean, a pull that's closer to uh, PJ's left side, but Dan guesses well here. Gets a good read, and PJ doesn't put a lot of pace on it. Not a great swing, not a great decision by him, and Tony also makes the decision to not put his body in the way that Dan's going that way. Gets a great up, bad set, and uh, I mean, I can't say it's a bad choice. He's gotten those on before, gets the pace for it, just missed it. Uh, there's definitely a more, definitely a better option to just get it on, but for a put away. I mean, it's definitely something Dan can do, so I'm not going to 
say it's too cheeky for him to pull off. I think we got 11 serving 12 here. That was a big missed break opportunity, though. Good serve. Another great play. And a great backhand. Ty knows it. I mean, we'll go back and watch this one real quick. See, the set, you could tell, is a little bit off the net. Um, Ty doesn't have as many options. I mean, he really has three options here. He can go for a pull, he can go for somewhat of a push, and he can go for a drop. Um, he doesn't love to drop. He can. I might have, personally, but that that's my style. See, Tony doesn't really have a way around Tyler here. If you give a nice slice drop, you might have it. But he goes for the pull, which he can absolutely rope it. Um, Dan guesses correctly again and doesn't get his hands in the way. Let's his body do the work. Great up. And a great set and great backhand. I mean, textbook right there. But that's what happens. You put yourself in the right position. Um, the set doesn't give Tyler as many options to many angles to put it side to side. Gets a great up. And now we're at 12s. Another great serve. I mean, he's so good with that. So good with the drop. Disguising it. So they take a lead, 13-12, and he rims it. I, th I still think if this game had the 2020 rules with the double serve, CS has a better chance of winning. They have two more servers that can ace. Um, does give Dan twice as many opportunities, but it also gives Tyler and PJ twice as many. So I think the one serve uh, it gives a little bit better upset potential because one good serving team can just go on a, oh, that's sick. That's absolutely sick. Great head fake. Hold on, I'm going to pause my prior conversation. Just great head fake. Tony's probably there. Um, just doesn't get the right touch, and it's just a great serve. But, yeah, one serve was definitely higher potential. It's a lot easier to work yourselves into a... Oh, he gets a, a reach there. Probably the case. Higher serve potential to... Uh, a team to just go dry for half a game and Dan can just, you know, instead of missing three that were really close, just land three amazing serves. And, and then that's, you know, that's a game one, two or three. Yeah, that's going to see tie doors at the same pull here. Uh, I would have probably stayed there if I were Dan. PJ might hit the push, but that's why you got to know your players. Um, I mean, it's a 50 50 guess. He's not going to hit down the middle of the net. Good players aren't going to hit down the middle of the net. Goes for the pull, and I think that leaves CS. Now they're up the break. I want to say it's 15-14. Game is flying by compared to today's games with two serves. <sighs> it's a bad set. That's a big break. I mean, that's when just one bad set, one missed, can really change a whole series, change a whole game. Um, it's a pretty good up. Dan puts it across. I want to say Tony should get that on, but, it, I mean, it's not a great set he should do a little flick he tries to go under him rather than put it to a side of him a little bit kind of use his body as a shield that's what happens now you're down 16 14 to number one team in the country you gotta uh oh so unlucky we had one of these to win our quarterfinals that got called back big time right there what happens here is um dan gets a pretty bad touch it's kind of up kind of behind him but it hits the net, which means in, in this indoor facility, you had to redo it. The whole crowd kind of sighs, knowing uh, how frustrating that is. But it's going to be a first serve, because it was a clean serve. Dan knows he got lucky, smiles a little bit. Good receive there. And that's just a great... That's probably been one of the cleanest one two threes for for Spicy Ruby here. It's a nice set, great little backhand push. 15-16. It really is up to Dan. Thankfully, we got some good observers here. Um, making sure these Fuangos are staying honest. Oh, I almost said it was second serve. But he hit the rim. It's not second serve. So PJ's going to miss now. We're flying through this game. 16-17. Also, what was cool about this indoor arena is that, you know, you got so many people... The noise level was getting awesome because just the, you know, everyone yelling and cheering. It's almost like being in a in a basketball or hockey type of arena. 
as opposed to an outdoor field where the, sh the noise doesn't get as loud. All right, time misses completely, and now we got 17-18. Everyone in the, on the field here watching knows that this is a big-time opportunity for Spicy Ruby to get back in it. Bad first serve. Dan, Dan, you got to be thinking he's going to do a drop or some type of pretty good on. Yep, there's that drop. Ty reads it well. <laughs> a great up. Unfortunately, Ezra kind of in the way here. I'm still going to rewind it. Talk through. So it's still 17 serving 18. He's going to go for this drop serve. I mean, that is that is a great up. If you know, if you've ever tried to defend Tyler, you get an up like that off a very easy one-two. First touch and a set. I mean, get your body in the way. Probably hits his leg or his hip area. Tyler tries to rope it past him. Dan gets in the way. Unfortunately, Tony with another pretty poor set here. And Dan tries to flip over. I don't know if it hits rim or hits the ground, but they don't get it done. That's, a, I mean, the second missed opportunity there. Kind of seems like they, they put themselves in this hole. CS didn't do too much. They had one or two good serves, but little mistakes. There's not too many breaks in this game, and that's where the national champion is sometimes determined. We got 18-19. Spicy Ruby didn't even win their region looking to take national championship. That's a clean 1-2-3 for CS. Then we got Tyler serving for the match. 20 serving 18. Everyone in the arena kind of wants to get it back to uh, get it back to Dan at a 19-20, and that's a great serve. Bad touch, clean. That's your match, 21-18. Some fans are elated. Some fans are uh, are sad, but still proud of their their Boston boys for for making it that far and such a great day. But yeah, that's that's the final game of CS's first national championship. Third most watched video for Drew. Just giving you some some context and also some insight of what was going on, why certain players were doing some things. This video <laughs> happens to go on for another 15 minutes of just people walking around in the trophy ceremony, I guess. But we're gonna we're gonna cut it off here. I think that's kind of where the review ends on my part. That's where I would turn off the video. Um, but that was a pretty great game kind of dry at some points but I mean you got to look through some defensive opportunities that that Ruby had they really just had it looked like three bad sets that, that were the determining their game um, they put in some good serves CS was able to to keep the game in front of them only going down a mini break I think at one point never going down two points that I can remember but yeah they uh they got through the game. They held off Dan serving. I think Spicy Ruby took game one, I want to say. Uh, so they had a fight back in a game two and three. I think game two, the game that they did win was pretty comfortable. I think it was game two. And then this game three was real tight. And uh, CS caps it off with an ace to win it from Tyler. And uh, this was also at like midnight or one in the morning at this point since the tournament only started at noon since it was delayed because of the thunderstorms and finding an indoor facility, which was definitely uh, an extra cool way for this 2017 national championship to end. So that's it for me right now. Uh, I'll be putting out more videos from different training sessions and Drew's posts, but uh, share, subscribe, comment different uh, suggestions for videos and things I should do more of, and uh, we'll be right back with more videos. So thanks, guys, for watching.